Let us now look at how we will transform a three phase waveform ABC to alpha beta coordinates and from alpha beta coordinates to DQ coordinates, that is the DC coordinates. Now consider this three phase waveform. Let me draw them. Now this is a three phase waveform along the time axis A phase, B phase, C phase, A phase, so on. So each is individually a time wave shape. Now this also can be represented in the spatial coordinates just like before. Now you can have three planes. A phase can be in one plane, let us say the horizontal plane. B phase can be at 120 degrees plane. Uh, uh, C phase can be at another plane which is 240 degrees from the A plane. So their projections will be on the spatial coordinates will look like this. So let us say I have three axes, A axis, B axis and C axis. They are distributed spatially 120 degrees apart or 2 pi by 3 radians apart. Let me also draw the negative portions of the axis in, in a light color. B phase is 2 pi by 3 radians apart from A. C phase is 4 pi by 3 radians apart from A. All measured anti-clockwise. Now consider a reference line like this at a given time instant. Now at this instant A phase is at a maximum, B phase and C phase are at negative 0.5. So I will put the A phase value, this is the A phase vector along the A phase line because this is the projection along the A axis, horizontal ax axis and that has a value 1. Let us say all these are sine waves of unit amplitude. So this has amplitude 1. Now the B phase and C phase both are at a meeting point here and they are at amplitude 0.5. Now I will put say negative 0.5. So B phase axis is here, negative 0.5 is here and C phase axis is here, negative C phase axis is on that side. So I will say C 0.5. Now these two contribute to the overall resultant vector. This is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, cos 60 is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 is 1 fourth, 0.5 into 0 0.5 is 1 fourth, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. So totally uh, 0 0.5 gets added to 1. So you will have a total amplitude of 3 by 2, 1.5. So you will see a vector, resultant vector of 3 by 2 results if you have all unit signs. Now let's say these are the phase, uh, uh, as an example, this could be phase voltage or phase currents. If you move this reference line along the time axis, smoothly along the time axis, this vector here will transcribe a smooth circle of amplitude of radius 3 by 2. So this is how it will come about just same like the two phase system that we saw alpha beta system now this three phase system we have to convert it into an alpha beta system so you will get it into a two phase system orthogonal system and from the alpha beta system let us translate it into a rotating dq reference frame observe that along this i have a resultant vector in this direction and then let us say I shift the time and at this point C is maximum negative so it is along this line so it will be like this the reference where resultant vector then if I shift to another time here B is maximum B is along that one so you will see the resultant goes in that fashion and then negative A in this direction the resultant then here C is maximum, you will see it is in this direction. Then here B is negative maximum, it is in this direction. And then 
a again one cycle is complete so you see the resultant vector makes a complete rotation so it transcribes this circle in this manner now let me draw the alpha beta axis now i have the alpha beta axis on that i will superpose the a b c axis and let me take a vector r r a a vector r b and r c in this fashion so this is just an arbitrary vector so r a is along the a axis r b is along the b axis r c is along the c axis now our job is to convert the a b c vectors this could represent i a i b i c or v a v b v c so any arbitrary a b c vectors to alpha beta coordinate system so a b c to alpha beta transformation let us do this now the vector r which is a composition of r a r b r c r a e to the power of j is 0 polar coordinates r b r b is referred with respect to b axis which is at angle 2 pi by 3 r b e to the power of j 2 pi by 3 and r c referred to the c axis which is r c e to the power of j 4 pi by 3 so this is the vector resultant vector r now expand that you have r a plus r b cos 2 pi by 3 plus r c cos 4 pi by 3 plus j r b sin 2 pi by 3 plus r c sin 4 pi by 3 this is the imaginary part now put the values for the cos and the sines r a minus r b by 2 minus r c by 2 because cos 2 pi by 3 is minus half cos 4 pi by 3 is minus half so this would be the real part plus j r b into root 3 by 2 this is sin 2 pi by 3 minus r c root 3 by 2 sin 4 pi by 3 is minus root 3 by 2 so this will be the imaginary part so this is of the form r alpha plus j r beta so this will be r alpha this will be r beta now let us represent this r alpha and r beta in a matrix form so r alpha r beta goes through a transformation matrix which is now r a 1 minus half this is minus half and then for r beta there is no contribution from r a that is 0 contribution from r b is root 3 by 2 contribution from r c minus root 3 by 2 and then you multiply it with this vector r a r b r c so this is our transformation so from this we see that we can get r alpha r beta so this is the vector r alpha beta which is represented in the alpha beta coordinates and the inputs are r a r b r c and pass it through this transformation matrix you will get r alpha r beta in the alpha beta coordinate system so this is a b c to alpha beta transformation now let us convert the alpha beta coordinate vector to dq so alpha beta to dq transformation dq is the synchronous reference frame which is rotating alpha beta is fixed stationary so let us say r dq we saw is equal to r alpha beta e to the power of minus j rho where rho is the angle between the alpha beta coordinate and the dq coordinate system so this is r alpha plus j r beta into cos, al cos rho minus j sin rho so you expand that you will see that 
you will get it in this fashion. Now this is Rd and this is Rq. So that will be Rd plus Jrq. So what is Rd and Rq? I can put it in the matrix form. Rd is this one. Cos rho will come in, sin rho will come in. Rq is minus sin rho and cos rho and I can put in the input vectors which is R alpha, R beta. So this thing has been put into this compact matrix form and this will be the alpha beta to dq transformation and this is a vector you can say is in the dq reference frame. So let us have a look at that dq reference frame. This is the alpha and beta, alpha beta coordinate system. Let us take an arbitrary vector like that and this red line is the d axis of the dq reference frame. This is the q axis orthogonal and the dq axis is shifted from the alpha beta axis by an angle rho. If this angle rho is a varying angle, let us say it is varying at omega t where omega e represents the radian frequency. So if it is rotating at 50 hertz, then uh, 2 pi 50 hertz into t will be this angle and this angle will be rotating, uh, increasing uh, at the 50 hertz rate and this dq coordinate system is rotating. If this vector is representing current or voltage, again rotating at 50 hertz, then this dq reference frame will be synchronized with the voltage or current vector and any any projections onto the dq axis reference frame will be constant fixed and they will be dc in this dq coordinate system therefore if you place the controller circuits and controller algo algorithms in the dq reference frame all the parameters will appear dc so if i project this vector onto the dq reference frame rq and rd this relative values of RQ, R, RD will always be fixed. However, if this vector is projected with respect to the fixed alpha beta axis, now with respect to the alpha beta axis, this vector is rotating, this vector is moving and therefore alpha value and beta value will change sinusoidally if it is a sinusoidal wave shape. And as this dq reference frame is also rotating with the green vector here, rd and rq will be constant and so therefore in the dq reference frame everything will appear dc. Now this is the concept. So this is how we have converted abc sine waves, three phase sine waves into alpha beta two phase rotate, um, uh, sine wave quantities and from the alpha beta we have converted into the dq reference frame quantities that is the rd rq which are DC in nature if you are sitting in the DQ reference frame and looking at the vector.